Hedge funds really matter for commodity markets. When hedge funds buy, prices go up, and when hedge funds sell, prices go down. Today, we're gonna to be talking about who these hedge funds are, how they trade, and how we can see the influence that these funds have on commodity markets in the weekly commitment of traders reports. We'll also talk about some other important investor categories, index funds, commercial traders, small private traders, and how they all interact with one another to exert influence over commodity market prices. That's a lot of information to get through today, so let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Dave Whitcomb from Peak Trading Research in Geneva, Switzerland. My goal is to help you trade more profitably with commodity market insights and real systematic trading strategies. So today is the second of three videos. Today we're gonna to be talking about commodity market participants and why hedge funds matter so much for commodity markets. In our third video, we're then gonna build some real systematic trading strategies using COT data. So to get started, let's look at the big picture and talk about the four main participants in commodity markets. That's hedge funds, index funds, commercial traders, and smaller private traders. So let's start with hedge funds. You probably know what a hedge fund is. It's an investment fund that is trying to make money for its clients by speculating. So for commodity futures, a hedge fund is trying to either buy or sell short commodity futures with the goal of making a profit for its clients. Now, there are a lot of different hedge funds that use a lot of different information and price drivers to trade, but broadly speaking, they fall into three main buckets. You have systematic traders, fundamental traders, and macro traders. Now, systems traders are mostly using some combination of technical or momentum signals to trade. Fundamental traders are using balance sheets. So for example, how much of a crop is grown, how much is harvested, how much demand is there. And then macro traders are taking big picture thematic views, for example, a view on the dollar or a view on inflation and expressing that via commodity futures. So there's been an important trend in the last 10 years, and that is hedge funds are focusing more and more on non-fundamental trading inputs, things like momentum or seasonality or market investor positioning uh, macroeconomic flows versus fundamental trading inputs, things like yields, production, demand. There's less of a focus on those fundamental trading inputs, more of a focus on macro and non-fundamental trading inputs. Now, Peak Trading Research, we are a leader in focusing on non-fundamental trading inputs. If you'd like to do a trial of our research, you can reach out insight at peaktradingresearch.com. So who are some of the big systematic hedge funds in commodity markets? It's groups like Millennium, Winton, Two Sigma, Systematica, SquarePoint, and even some of the fundamentally biased hedge funds, groups like Citadel or DE Shaw, they are using a quantamentals approach to trading. So they're blending quant style trading, systems trading with fundamental inputs that they can back test. Now, how do we know that hedge funds have so much influence in commodity markets? How can we see that? So if we look at weekly CFTC commitment of trader report money flows, we can see that there's a positive correlation between the money that hedge funds are putting into or out of commodity markets and what prices do during the week. So if hedge funds buy, prices go up. If hedge funds sell, prices go down. Now let's take an example for a big liquid agriculture market like corn. If we take the correlation between hedge fund flows and prices, we can see that they are strongly positively correlated, meaning, again, when hedge funds buy, prices go up. Uh, we can see that mathematically. We can prove that out. Now, this is the same for most commodity markets. Corn is not just an exception. In most markets, we see this relationship. Hedge funds are the price drivers for commodity markets. Now, in our third video, when we talk about building real systematic trading systems around COT data, we're gonna talk a lot more about this idea, right? How we can use hedge fund positioning to actually inform profitable trading decisions. So let's move on to index funds. Index funds invest in commodities as a hedge against future inflation. They're using commodity futures as a store of value. This might be 
a big pension fund or an endowment or a foundation or a sovereign wealth fund and they have a big pool of assets that they need to protect against the threat of inflation. So these index investors will invest in a commodity index, a popular index like the Bloomberg Commodity Index or the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, where the goal is to just hold a big bucket of commodities, crude oil and gold and copper and silver and corn and wheat and soybeans and cattle and cocoa. They just want exposure to the whole asset class so that if prices start rising, they know that they have a hedge against inflation. So you might have guessed it, the number one trading input that index investors use when deciding to put money into or out of commodity markets is future inflation expectations. If they think inflation is gonna run hot over the near term, they're going to put more money into commodities as a hedge against future price rises. So what are some examples of index investors? You might have the California Public Employee Retirement System or the Harvard Endowment or the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority. These are investors that are investing for multiple quarters or even multiple years. They're long-term, slow-moving investors. Now, the third category is the commercial or producer category. Now, these are big commercial trading houses like the ABCDs, ADM, Bungie, Cargill, and Dreyfus. Commercial trading houses are generally the price takers in commodity markets. Remember, we talked about hedge funds being the price drivers. Commercial trading houses are usually the price takers. Now, this does not mean that they're uninformed or they're slow. What it does mean is that they usually have cash positions against their future trades. Now, hedge funds just trade futures, right? They don't have access to the same physical value chain and cash markets like producers do. But producers, they might view futures as expensive or cheap basis cash, and they're more willing to take the other side of the trade that hedge funds have on. Now, again, if we look at the correlation between weekly producer and commercial flows and price changes, we can see this relationship, right? There's a strong negative correlation in a market like corn. When producers buy or sell, it doesn't have the same positive correlation as say hedge funds. Producers are the price takers. So let's talk about this final category, the fourth category, that's small prop shops. Now in the disaggregated COT report, there's this category called other reportables. Other reportables is a mix of groups that trade a significant number of contracts, but they're also not necessarily managing money for other groups. In that case, they'd be a managed money trader, but they're not. So they're managing their own money but they're managing a significant amount of money. So this is groups like option locals, family offices, Chinese speculators. It's, it's kind of a mix. And then there's non-reportable traders. Non-reportable traders hold a small enough position in commodity futures that they fall below the CFTC's reporting requirements. I'll put a link below where you can find what exactly these limits are for each market. But the way to think about this is the CFTC is trying to ensure the orderly functioning of markets. The CFTC doesn't want a few big players colluding and talking and running markets up and down and squeezing everyone out. So if you hold five contracts of corn or 10 contracts of crude oil, the CFTC isn't too worried about you running markets or causing any disruptions. They just don't need to hear from you. So they put you in the non-reportable category. Now, without confusing things too much, remember there are two different COT reports. There's the agriculture specific supplemental report and then there's the disaggregated report that includes a lot of different markets 150 different markets now this can be a little bit confusing there's some differences in how different groups are classified between the two reports take a deep breath let's remember where we started all this right hedge funds are the price drivers in commodity markets now for some markets index funds can matter a little bit more or other reportable traders can matter a little bit more. But by and large, keep in mind that hedge funds are the price drivers. That is the group that you really need to focus on. We'll come back to this idea a lot in our third video, where we talk about building real systematic trading systems around COT data and specifically around 
hedge fund positioning. Peak Trading Research is the only research company that provides its clients with quarterly updates of correlations between price changes and weekly COT money flow. So you can always see the evolution of which category matters most in your trading. As always, if you're interested in a trial of our actionable commodity research, you can reach out insight at peaktradingresearch.com. If you found this video valuable, please hit the like and subscribe button below for more great stuff from Peak Trading Research. Thanks, we'll see you soon.